Hi, I'm Mike Dwyer and thanks for coming to the Guardian Jet Learning Center to talk about Aircraft Finance 101 or Life Cycle Cost. We look at Life Cycle Cost Analysis as kind of the foundation of a lot of the financial work that we do. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, it, uh, Life Cycle Cost has tremendous uh, analytical merit all on its own to help you understand the impact of what you're operating or what you're considering operating in the future. And second, Life Cycle Cost is a great foundation for all the more complex financial models that you'll use uh, to consider capital expenditures. So in a fleet plan, uh, and when I say fleet, whether you have one airplane, five airplanes, ten airplanes, uh, that's what I mean. Um, but in a fleet plan, life cycle cost is a wonderful uh, piece of the, the puzzle. Uh, net present value, uh, when you consider cost of capital, time value of money. Uh, replacement timing uh, is often looked at through life cycle cost lens. Uh, do I operate an airplane 5 years, 10 years, 15 years? Do I make the replacement today, next year, 2 years, or 3 years? So life cycle cost gives you a, a great look at that. And also, ultimately, it is an integral part of asset management, where you look at your airplane like any other asset in a portfolio. So there's lots of reasons to understand life cycle cost. Uh, let's get started and talk about exactly what we mean. So in a life cycle cost uh, analysis, we're looking at a financial projection. So it's usually between 5 and 10 years, of course, looking into the future. The three components of life cycle cost are the purchase price, the operating costs over the term, and the disposal or residual terminal value at the back end. Since we're talking about airplanes, I like to call it buy, fly, sell. Uh, so simply put, we build a model where we enter the purchase price of the aircraft, we look at what it costs to operate the aircraft over the term, and then we have a terminal value at the end. We sum those numbers into a net cumulative number down in the bottom right-hand corner. Of the three inputs, two of them are pretty straightforward, the purchase price and the operating cost. First of all, we can investigate or negotiate purchase price. Second of all, and the operating cost, very well published in our industry, and you might have your own direct experience with operating the aircraft. So the two inputs, uh, a buy and fly, pretty straightforward. I make sure you got some expert advice on the residual value. It's the toughest to call because it's out in the future and it varies. It does vary from model to model. And uh, it's a learning center discussion topic all on its own. So you might want to get some help in the third part of the life cycle cost analysis. In round numbers, in the actual projection or cash flow or uh, um, spreadsheet, there's about a hundred inputs that go into a typical life cycle cost. It makes great sense to build consensus at the beginning of the process between the people that will interpret the results of the life cycle cost analysis and the people building it. Uh, if you just everybody get on the same page in, in early, uh, it makes it for a much more efficient process and of course much more effective uh, product at the end. Examples of those inputs would be the term, how far do we want to look out? Do we want to look out five years, ten years, etc.? Do we want to do a cash flow, which is more typical in a life cycle cost, or do we want to do it from a profit and loss perspective, the more traditional financial reporting statements? Is the model a pre-tax model, or is it an after-tax? If it's after-tax, what's the, the tax rate that we'll, we will apply to all the deductible expenses like operating cost, appreciation, interest, if that's involved, etc.? So, once we've settled on the inputs, then we say, what are we going to, uh, is this going to be a comparative analysis? We like to look at a baseline life cycle cost projection as your status quo. What if we just kept doing what we're doing today for five to ten years to determine the analysis? And then we can start comparing that to different options of uh, replacing in this interval, looking at different replacement options for what we currently operate, etc. But that's what we mean about the comparative nature of a life cycle cost. Okay, so now let's look at an example of a cash flow so you get an idea of what one looks like. First of all, there's several pages of inputs. I'm going to skip past that right now and just get to what the output looks like. Essentially two pages that build on each other. The first page has the operating costs in it. And in my buy, fly, sell uh, metaphor, this is the fly part. It's also what I call, if I hand you an airplane, this is what it costs me to operate one. So we start out uh, pretty simple, uh, variable costs on top, uh, and fixed costs come after that, uh, or you can do it vice versa. And then we like to have interval costs associated with it. And an interval cost would be 
when we have a significant expense that occurs at some point during the, the term of the projection, uh, like an overhaul on an engine or paint, uh, paint and interior refurbishment, a significant maintenance event that would be, uh, you know, affect the uh, results of the, the life cycle cost. Uh, so that's page one, and that really deals with what it costs to operate an air aircraft. Page two brings in the buy and the sell phase and uh, adds that into the operating expenses. So uh, we look at what we buy the aircraft for. We also, so we're introducing capital. And then we'd also introduce the tax impact of the deductible expenses here on this page. So the second page introduces the operating expenses and the capital cost. So we've got buying it. And by the way, if you were financing here or leasing, that would be represented in page two. And then you'd have the operating costs you added from page one. And then at the end, you'd have the residual or terminal value back into the cash flow. So you had a representation of what the value of the asset was at the end of the period. And that nets down to that bottom right hand corner life cycle cost cumulative number. So that is the buy, fly, sell life cycle cost. Um, in a nutshell, if you'd like to discuss your personal or particular uh, circumstances in more detail, please give us a call. Uh, we'd love to talk about it. Thanks for listening today on Life Cycle Cost.